What's up? We're in the next part. Please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings. All right. Um, get it to And the thing is, I I don't want to just keep on explaining the same stuff over and over again, like over and over and over and over. Keep using to keep work the same band that's doing the exact same nasty. Like I can't. Like I just I can't. Like if you like to keep we like a bona. Ling in the nonsense. Eba yetang. Seki seki address it. I've already addressed this matter, and I don't want to address it again. Like proper hagi again. I need spile skelem leso. I don't want to think it's a because, like I said in the previous part, when wicked people are busy running the show, they low key understand that people are not happy with their leadership. People are not happy with their rulership. People are not happy with the fact that they have taken on the reins. Why? Because nobody is truly at peace, comfortable, able to let their guards down, able to let you know their what is the like their their, their breast hang proper after taking off their brazier at the end of the day they they cannot let their anything pendulum do you understand what i'm saying and just swing left to right when the wicked are reigning because the wicked have got conditions for peace they have got severe conditions for people maintaining their peace and since most people don't want to lose whatever it is that gives them stability and peace they buy attrition pressure to a certain extent by um uh, uh by force by like just reluctantly they they take they accept their leadership they basically kiss behind it's what i'm trying to explain to you guys and my cousin has 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 had her behind kissed by literally her entire immediate family and even mine and the like people are kissing the behind of a most nefarious woman do you understand what i'm saying because baba Kla, hot in and of themselves they don't want whatever like what she did to me it's so extreme like what she did to me is so hard knock that ain't nobody out here trying to get on a bad side do you understand what i'm saying and i don't know this is what i'm saying right now i just can't give up now i've come too far from where i've started from and nobody told me the road would be easy so i get wrong on the bible has communicated to me that many are the afflictions of the saints of the righteous but the lord delivers him from them all so because the lord has made it clear that i will suffer much persecution if i choose him i was not expecting an easy going route and so now that i'm on a hard knock life road i'm like yo I, the bible told me this would happen it's uncomfortable i'm not gonna lie like proper wish it was easier but it ain't it ain't easier and it is what it is it's the it's the the cross i must bear the lot i've been awarded and you know gunje na gunja lonje like impilo le gukhlungu kusiyer but impilo and i am going for day to day because he told me that do not grow weary of doing good but because in due season you will reap the peaceful fruit of righteousness if you don't give up so i don't have an option to give up that's what's good but the wicked work with fear they work with attrition they are like that their father the devil and so because Satan, Bizuji special ne kota ya seka sino Satan wa kona the way that you've just embraced him. Kodi kodi kasing zalona. Ono u bizu unta 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 leja hanya ne hanya nengara ke snow fish. The devil has literally consumed you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. La mota, the devil is like they are full of of uh, fear mongering. They are full exorbitant with it with fear mongering they will make you shake in a corner they will make you minus 42 degrees come on it'll be hotter than a summer in the kalahari desert that's what's good mm. they will shake you up like no man's business they will shake you shaky shaky shake you and you will do the twist like you're drinking lemon twist you will do it on the spot you need to use the loo when they have started and that's exactly what my cousin has done Oh, that is the center to attain. I thought that is my older sister, my little sister, my mom. What that is the old, the, yeah, the younger sister, the biggest that is realization. She is the biggest, um, fear mongered victim of hers. Almost have a She is scared. She's like, if I stand for Karabo Kitole Mana, because if at all this was done to Kurazi, if this was, if, if the massacre against Karabo was this extreme, what can she do to me? And uh, my cousin also went out of her way, by the way. Oh, she educated and instructed her younger sister 
on the occult. So the younger sister now is awake and and she has not been inducted into such hard knock sorcery so as to be similar to the sister's sorcery. So she knows that she in and of herself is practicing the younger sister thanks to the older sister but not at the level, not at the height of her sister. All she knows is that her sister prospered to grab a whole thriving professional and academic and rip her from university and the workforce. Oh, prosperile ho kubisa karabo mosebeting. She prospered to cause Karabo to lose her degree. She prospered to cause Karabo to lose her little rato la familia jaje. Her own mom bad mouths her. Like, it's just like the, what we're making an observation of is extreme. And if I dare stand with Karabo, who in the world is gonna protect me against what my sister is? And then because it looks as if though my God has not had my back, right? Because Oto oh, Zinja fell away seeking tumbleweed. Kuru, 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 kuru. Crickets. Crickets are all over the show where my life is concerned. Crickets are out here cricketing. Do you understand? Yeah. They then are like, even in Karabon Zali Pisa Buaka Morena Jesu Maramona Jesu, I think he's not coming through for her. They, it looks as if though God is not coming through for me, but what they don't understand is that the Lord has handed the situation over to its reprobate state. He has given them a strong delusion where I am concerned. It, I'm not forsaken, I never can be, I'm a child of God. But these people have been made to believe a witch, and so now they're living. Kaletuano, Letuan, Wait King, Nervous Wreck Vibes. 24 hours a day, I'm too busy, but now they're out here, but I'm going to get they are shaking. That's what's good. That's what it is that my cousin has done. She has achieved the horisi. Koba tumba ko he suka ufel. The horisi, guys. Like uksabu muntu, uksaba umuntu to a point where you will not intervene because our our eyes go to zizoki pa boma huat ksasa. How to move John San Kausan? Like my cousin recently just did a went a spell maybe like three weeks ago, four a month to make sure how na motong mamelang. Maraena every so often watla atong mamelang mo YouTube. And uh, the reason why answer huta is. Even though it looks as if the Kaza Hagadia Seveza to cause me to have no one listening to me, not even my own subscribers. Eh, uh, even though it looks as if the Kaza Seveza, what's freaking her out is the fact that I don't care that ain't nobody out there listening to me. It's the fact that Ukarabo and herself, the, the actual content creator, the, the mastermind of the situation to survive the tribulation, yeah, that lady chica that claims Uguti Samudimu is taking care of her. Yeah. Yeah, that's the bean lana. And then make it chill out and yeah, just. I don't cook available about when yeah, not I. Mm, yeah, just yeah, give up now. But for me, it's I just. I can't give up now. I came too far from where I started from. Umudim has this. It's that basic. The Lord got this, right? So I can Ali, Angi Ali. I'm not throwing in Itawela. And because I'm not throwing in the towel, she out your own some girl. Hey, I'm all I think. If you like a king, how are you going to make a lawyer? What's the magic wand that I'm going to do? The magic wand that I'm going to do. 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 But the thing that is freaking this lady chica out is the fact that I'm going to do. And that's what always freaks wicked men and women out. The righteousness of the righteous, it is written in God's word, delivers them. But the wickedness of the wicked ensnares them. So it is the fact that I have maintained righteousness that is scary. It is the fact that I'm like Jim Gordon, thank you, that's his name. That police guy from Gotham. I'm like Jim Gordon with apparently a pie in the sky ideal. Where it is that I'm looking forward to a Gotham, a Gotham that is crime free or at least uh, largely um protected from the criminals in gotham i am basically apparently allegedly according to all of these monstrosities of human beings allegedly apparently allegedly and some more alleged uh and they want me to feel like i'm wasting time but they're scared of me just as everybody's scared of them the wicked are scared of the righteous because of righteousness why because righteousness wins hearts over Righteousness wins people. What is right and what is true and what is good and what is just and what is lovely is what it is that people want to live in the midst of. And so you will always be very scared, very afraid of a person that refuses to settle. You will always be afraid of a person that refuses to turn to crime just to get through the day. You will always be nervous and intimidated by the woman who even though she's struggling to feed her kids and herself, nonetheless refuses to allow herself to be the mistress of a married man. Nonetheless refuses to rob a bank. Nonetheless refuses to do whatever it takes to feed the kids you will always be scared of the honest person that even though they're suffering they are not alarming they are not throwing in the towel abas 
Bye. Iskelem, they are not interested. They will never do anything that goes against their virtue set, their moral set, their value set. And so for those reasons, they are the true threat and the true risk to a crime state. They are the true threat to Ama Kinsari, Lime Gagwena Bizi, Azienzu Papa Action Negizo Izo, Aja Massacring, Abo Gel in the school tunic. Mm. You are always going as a wicked man or a wicked woman. Be afraid, be very afraid, and be a nervous wreck of like monumental proportions in the presence of a person that's like, I'm sorry, I don't care that everybody else is scared of you, I'm not. And even then, even if I was scared of you, whatever it is that you do, I can't because it goes against my virtues. No manginga saba in in tupego. Even if I'm scared of poverty, bottom line is I am not the thief you want me to be. I am no man's mistress. I am no dude's side piece. I am no Gen Z's wife as a millennial. I am no body's second, third, fourth, fifth wife. I waited on Jesus for answered prayer. So you don't get to rock up La M Kakweni two days ago and take away my eternity past God and try to act like my eternity past God. Having rocked up when I just my You were born in 1984, but you want to take over an eternal God in my life. Ufunukungi tu Samina. You wanna scare me. Cause me or kibeli worries. Eh, kilo boy fanna. Kilo cradi nightmare. You want to make out of me a scary cat out here meowing and meowing trying to intimidate an enemy by hissing but not actually scratching it no we're gonna scratch that's what's good like i'm just standing for myself i'm fighting for the rights of Aminaiza. as a south african citizen i'm covered actually by the constitution and what is happening is, is it's just hella illegal and also crazy unconstitutional yet it is nonetheless being proliferated evidencing that my country is a crime state even though it's got like a whole constitution that apparently allegedly covers its citizens i am allegedly apparently a law a south african citizen and i say allegedly apparently because i'm not being treated like a citizen especially not a law-abiding one with no criminal record or any kind of like misdemeanors or history in general of wreaking havoc my country is treating me like a criminal like a pariah like umuntu that's unacceptable in it when once upon a time i contributed heftily to their economy so all of this like nonsense nonsensing that is happening all over this nonsense country Galilee, like you must understand like the only thing that will conquer all of this darkness is for the righteous standing on their ground like literally putting their foot down refusing to settle refusing to tolerate and embrace um jezebel refusing to just accept Duguti, this is it is what it is girl like ha, ha. it is what it is sister girl ha, 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 ha. it is what they just deal man like ooh, like just take it oh, ho, 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 ho. i mean ain't nobody live if you don't just take it oh ho, 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 ho. oh ho. i'm sorry it's not even funny why are you laughing the wicked are running the show like your grandmother can't even eat because of them and yet you are on some ho 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 deal ho 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 deal ho 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 deal we went through too much as South Africa. That's what's good for like black people to be suffering like this in 2023 especially So really and truly to protect us back to the days of apartheid but like a version 2.0 unacceptable entirely unacceptable and Labosatan all over the show Doro and we lay a high sun, a doro. Get her a guns and a cafe her a dream spacey. Lauren. So, my cousin is as obsessed as she is with my particular case and keeps on coming back to watch me, look at me, see what I'm doing, precisely because she hopes to discourage me from what I am continuing to do because she understands that for as long as I'm still breathing, kicking like a baby inside a woman's womb. I can still be born and be big one day and therefore run the show. So she's trying to literally abort me mid-pregnancy. She's trying to abort me mid-pregnancy. And one, her strategy to like killing me has, has always failed. She has tried that before with the human sacrifice ritual. That has always failed, like, in this, like in the, all the time. Just recently, I have I survived King suicide. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just recently, I conquered a hard knock temptation for suicide. Uh, they can't kill me. They are having a very hard time taking me to eternity. Do you understand? So if they can't kill me, they're scared that I might still rise. Like a whole baby that has been um, manufactured in the womb of a woman. Yeah, because it's a manufacturing process. A whole baby that's being manufactured in the belly of a woman. 
that is one day going to be the son of man <laughs> of course like Ushashan, what you're going to do is raise up a little bit of a herod uh, that is going to also then um you know hook up like a very hard knock carnage decree to kill all the baby boys in all of israel yeah just as it happens also it happened also with moses kill all the baby boys kill all the baby boys to make sure prophecy does not come to pass the devil has been doing this for a minute where it is that he's out here killing people before they can get to a point a point do you understand a point before they can get to a point seeing as people are always missing the point yeah before they can even get to a point of um what should i call this thing uh of actually like walking in fulfilled prophecy they always try to kill them they always try to kill them but then the lord has this thing that he does when people want to kill people that he has got a big job for in the future he causes them to be enslaved unfortunately somewhere else and that's exactly what happened with joseph like his brothers tried to kill him but then one of his brothers i believe it was reuben that was like uh joe we can't kill our own brother and then reuben was like let's rather sell him to the to those slavery people over there or as a judah i stand created as to which of the brothers was out here on some antagonized the attempted murder of Joseph yeah and they uh, when then they saw slave traders they sold him into slavery so they incarcerated him as a slave rather than kill him and that's exactly what rescued the day and fulfilled the prophecy ultimately it's always the incarceration or the hiding with Moses they put him in a little basket and he got adopted by by Pharaoh's daughter that's what's good in that river Nile type establishment thing and then later on he did what he was supposed to do anyway but he could have died if he stayed in the camp of the hebrews because they were busy out here massacring firstborn children and everything mm, yeah little boys they were actually you know massacring them very well uh seeing as the lord would much rather put uh moses in like a pagan's household than have him die and Joseph, he would much rather make out of him a slave than let him die. Uh, understand that he will, or he, the Lord will continue. Given that there is nothing new under the sun, whatever it is that has happened yesterday will continue to happen tomorrow and the next day, etc. God Almighty on high then, guys, goes on right ahead and does exactly what he did historically. Instead of allow the death of Joseph at the hands of his brothers, he took Joseph and put him in slavery. And that's what he's done with me. Like prophecy has got to be fulfilled. That's what he keeps doing. And he will keep doing it over and over and over again. Where his children will face want, will face obscurity, will face sorrow, will face sadness, will imagine life is over. But that thing that makes their life so over, right, is the very thing that protects them. Because a thrive, if I, if at all, for instance, I were to thrive, survive, live, breathe, kick my kicks as a living, never mind dying horse out there. I might have actually been targeted for actual assassination like with these kinds of things that i speak on the rooftops against the occult i might have had an actual sniper rock up where it is that i am like uh, exiting the building where i work and from a building literally just shoot me dead because i am too prolific i'm too influential as like a media hit like somebody that's now garnered for herself like a whole million subscribers on youtube and so for those reasons i'm too big and i'm out here telling on some cult organization they might have actually hired an actual assassin against me but right now no one thinks of me as anything much i'm not very intimidating i'm just this like scantily perused random chick that speaks lofty things on youtube and yet strangely ain't nobody out here watching her that's what i am and so because i am so barely perused i'm underestimated and as underestimated as i am i'm non-threatening to assassins and so they're not gonna kill me except those that recognize what i could be because they remember what i used to be my cousin remembers what i used to be and so she knows what i could be and so because she knows what i could be she's out here trying to assassinate me personally personally she's trying to assassinate me and it is not working because she's trying to do it remotely because that's how she does her human sacrifice rituals she would never be found with a smoking gun over anybody's cadaver she would never be found with a dripping knife of blood uh, with a knife dripping blood over anybody's cadaver she does what it is that occult people do very cowardly kill people remotely and then go on right ahead to sit around in um their spaces where they're at being respected as you know people of influence in society even though they're entire bandits they are murderers that's what they are in a human sacrifice ritual the individual that they have killed is only going to pass away in two weeks uh from a car accident and it's going to look as if though that it was just a natural cause you know life happens unfortunately they were at the wrong place wrong time skipped the robot and now she's dead meanwhile it was a human sacrifice ritual it does not look like her so she also then goes on right ahead to attend the funeral that's what people in the occult are bunch of cowards I, frankly i have more mad respect for murderers that are in jail now 
because their guns got found with fingerprints and everything because they actually went and killed people for real these randos out here killing using occult magic i suga Barry coward that's what they are they're just a bunch of cowards that really and truly i've been begging them for years all my life jartin who's on give a boy it has a good thing about it well over there ha well we put a more our work out in well we put a more our magic one did well we put a more our people kiao kata mona rito luana rito gura gan nite after school is after school kia rita lo kena kwa ga fight club ya bread pit about Ntwantse ka nnete mara o bi zuntso ipatile mora wa ditlhare re tla o yetsang na re ka taba ka 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 letsa silewo and so they go on right ahead and make her look all crazy go on right ahead to make crank hey look crank hey i suga it's okay do you godwa they need me manje ke masekun jalo ukuthi ngiyo bot angish mm they need me or nike lot hoka fa like lo kick up again they need me to die so that they can basically just chill hang out you know relax make out make like a flower and bloom they need me ukuthi ngiyobuna onyo bota guys and for as long as ngisa pila i am a threat ke a tsosa ke a tsosa wait king ke 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 se tsosane i am a thing that goes bump in their night even though they're a thing that goes bump in my night i guess we're even now aren't we se re tswana jwano eh re matchitse re le tshu eh ra pere di go tsotse tswana nga buti we are one and the same thing ra tshosa ke re ka bona re ke mangwe to last time o tshosa mmo because ntwe we yetsa ka o nontso jumper in a ghost suit in the dark of night unzo ga ha hu ha hu making yourself like the thing that makes the woman scream na go scream ma khoske tsela je so ha o ntshose ka o fela grand shop ha le kopane ha le tshose mara ke mo di kentse di tshosana he etle ntwe tshosana ke modim that's what's good motho tshosa the lord is scary that's who's scary that's what's good yeah ha e bana nala batla go ke tsoha ke la ke ke ha le gang pha le khadima la morena je so i will shake on that day i will tremble i might even urinate in my pants i will be scared i will wonder what have i done lord please forgive me for the sins i've committed i will tremble and fall at his feet and be like i see that you are mad please have mercy ask you see hi what did i do probably something nasty i know i know i'm a man of unclean lips a woman of unclean lips and i live among a people of unclean lips please forgive me ke to go patshwagelo ke se ke se ke sa tse bolo re ke ntseng the way nje fela o ke tshabang modimo ka teng eh ha ba le batla ngo tshosa ntshapeng tumpeng ka le khadima la jesus christ and since the lord has no intention of to shapa me with a khadima why lona le batla ngo ke tsa le khadima la lona why le batla ngo ngo tlhala ka le khadima la zeus a false god's lightning must come and intimidate me is that what we're doing Mm. -mm. So this cousin, I'm sorry, I'm busy doing edits over here, right? Uh not edits, sorry, but like uploads. I'm kind of behind cuz there was like a whole three day power cut in the neighborhood that made it such that our solar panels fainted and so I wasn't able to over uh, upload overnight and so now I'm still uploading Kirlekanangwen. So have mercy uh and stuff due to ish we to get kibora, kibora. Yeah, guys. So I keep dreaming about the the the, the what do you call this? This cousin's um afflictions on me. What the hell? okay she wants me to start from scratch right uh basically just like take any job and start again from the bottom just like what under heaven it is that she had to do because of her irresponsibility except i'm not irresponsible everything of mine was thrown way side headlong whatever because of corruption i can't say that enough so we're not the same thing i lost everything overnight the same way that she once upon a time also lost a job overnight cuz not that way i do la atore ke babalas we are not the same thing we are absolutely not the same thing i was working like a dog when i lost my job and i was unfairly suspended you were not working like a dog if anything you were absent like a dog komo se reting ene ipora everybody ka ho hobola wa hao and then you got fired or at least almost fired and you had to leave a job for a lower paying one just so you can still continue to have a job given that you were 5 seconds away from being i don't know fired like yeah i can't say that enough o batla go ke lo tlala from the bottom na na ndo se na se ke le busy ke araba di phone with this level of intelligence kissing out all of those hours at switchboard when i should be doing this work ha eh before na ke lo sebetsa mo sebetsi go corporate o sa mpata le handle en kampane ka dula mo mo kuku mo mra wa ntlo wa mpe wa mmaka ntse ke le busy ke tsa these videos cuz this is actually truly beneficial i'm not going to sit at a switchboard or as a an administrator as a whole 40 year old skogwan working in corporate south africa get it from the bottom kissing out all of those 8 hours get that nonsense job that i can't stand hey instead of this hare bade i'd much rather do this otherwise girl come from musebetsi as an executive cuz that's what i'm supposed to be today and seeing as that's highly unlikely going to happen i am highly unlikely going to find myself back in corporate south africa let's just put that out there 
Number two, Baba I had a dream where my cousin was in it. First of all, influencing my little sister to scare me into just taking any job tomorrow. Okay, right. And then secondly, she pushed me to some Generation Z men. Oh, very handsome. I will not take that away from him. Uh, some handsome Gen Z. I don't know how many times I have made myself clear. One minute, I'm so distracted, I can't multitask. They spread rumors about me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Rumors were spread about me. What in the world? Rumors were spread about me. Lies, like basically false witness. Thou shalt not bear false witness. All right? False witness was like just voluminously spread about me to a point where now nobody, not even a single soul in these streets was trying to look at me. So it worked, it succeeded to make me look like some derelict. And then they want me to embrace that, just accept it. Except that's the thing, when somebody ultimately gets their day in court, in spite of what it is that you reviled them concerning and now it becomes clear that you reviled them on that day you're gonna look super dumb aren't you you're going to look like some jealous freak that spread rumors about an innocent woman and you did it for an entire decade that's the thing is my cousin the fact that she literally held to her guns for 10 years almost 10 years it's nine years this year over somebody that was innocent and she sat back and hoped that she would just get finished off and she didn't she looks hella diabolical she looks extremely evil and so because she looks evil she wants me to quickly go me your seven at any dumb job so i can look like what it is that she was back in the day somebody or business are singing me it she keeps on messing up in the employment uh, in, in the employments that she has she keeps on messing with the jobs that she has until she has to start from scratch she would make me look like that and i told you guys that before i will be put to shame the lord would much rather fast basically neutralize the whole planet before you will let his Christians be put to shame. So if at all, I will apparently allegedly never ever get my day in court. The Lord will then take his Christians who apparently are never ever gonna get their day in court because the wicked are just that strong. The wicked are just that gifted at pushing a silly agenda. The Lord will then first take us home. If at all, I will gain no justice against my cousin. The naivety that dwells in her is that breakthrough, do you understand what I'm saying? And so because I don't have breakthrough, She's thinking, where she's thinking right now, that she must either settle or live habushoku. But she's also low-key scared because I'm innocent. And over and above my innocence, I'm righteous to a certain extent. Like, I, I refuse to settle and I also refuse to compromise. And that's the thing, Emojang, because she knows that I have it in me to rise again. And so for as long as I'm still alive, I am the bane of her existence in spite of my scantily perused content on YouTube. Despite how going nowhere I am, despite me being as apparently stuck and stranded as I am, I am nonetheless pushing some kind of a, you know, thing. Yeah. That's the thing that intimidates rotten people. The fact that their victims just don't give up. And when they don't give up, they stand to be humiliated, exposed. A righteous man is not good for business, for a crime state, for criminals, for the wicked. And that's what makes them push and push even though umuntu sega fedile, ofufureile. So they literally finish themselves off by trying to finish off obviously innocent people. Because now they just look really very exorbitantly evil. Now they just look really mean like really really mean because for crying out loud so she has nothing but for my cousin it's like yeah she might have nothing i know her she might have nothing today but she has shown me that she can rise from the ashes this chick is just gonna fly one day she's gonna soar so i've got to be comforted in the fact that she's finished off that's why people should just not dabble with darkness because you are going to struggle to let your victims go if abazingeni in dabazo compromise if your witchcraft has not worked on them but they are also hoping in a bigger power a grander force that's the thing that's going to turn you so incredibly homicidal you will become so murderous you are going to insist to
You're going to insist that this person dies even though they are practically dead even though they're practically dead like literally people are like it doesn't look like Lomuntu's or Puma situation like her situation does not look like it's going anywhere but when people know what they've done to you and I was in Gen there's always a risk that you might get justice there's always a risk that you might get justice and so then they graduate to well my cousin is not really graduating to murder she's always been a, mur a murderess like that it was among the first spells she was made to cast when she join the occult um that's what i'm getting at uh, but there are some people that are currently now today prepared that i should die that initially started out basically priding themselves on the fact that they'd never kill a fly they'd never harm a fly uh, all they do is just you know severely compromise people's lives until they can't breathe but uh you know they eventually get put on like a breathing machine they don't actually die yeah uh, most of my enemies are like that. They they pride themselves in having never committed human sacrifice rituals or whatever. They they have morals within the occult. They've got rules of engagement inside the occult where it is that they they pretty much have a what I would never do list to in the occult. Oh, I'll totally steal a career. I'll totally just steal a boyfriend and make him my husband. I'll totally just steal a husband altogether and be his mistress and then following that I will be his wife because I'll make him leave his wife. Yeah, but I mean, goodness, killing? Who do you think I am? That's the right, that, that, that's the self-righteousness of some people in the occult for you. Priding themselves and having never done human sacrifice rituals, but they eventually get there. They graduate to a height of evil. Where it is that now the very same chick that's on some, goodness, all I do is steal husbands. Wow, I don't kill. Except what's up with this like ex-wife not coming back for my husband? No, honey, it's her husband and he's trying to reconcile to her. And now she's out here trying to kill that lady so that this guy does not leave her. Given that umu winne gangane by fire by force. Ga kohovel. Hey. That's what's good. Yeah, well, my cousin was not that. She was always in Jefela Boliland. She was always a rotten little rando. Uh, from the very get-go, she was prepared to murder. I don't even know what graduated my cousin today. You know, when you put yourself, when you are irresponsible in life, it's exactly like this animal in America. When you are irresponsible in life, when you mess up so much, like when you throw away every virtuous and beautiful thing in your life, you are going to become one who has lost Yonkinto. You're going to become one who has lost everything and everyone. And so for those reasons, uh, my nose is itchy. You're going to be that rando that loses everything and everyone. And so now that you've lost everything, that's when murder starts to become feasible when people don't want to honor what you want them to do. This guy in the US messed up his entire life and now he is a big fat chunky psychopath trying to be with the woman that wants nothing to do with him trying trying and he keeps on penduluming between love and, and death love and death and love and death uh, etc spells because he feels entitled to me and the thing that graduated him to that height of evil i mean the guy's always been a criminal like really let's just not even try and give him too much of a benefit of a doubt over here but the thing that graduated him against women in particular to this height of insanity is the fact that his wife left him well the second one so it wasn't even really his wife but his wife left him because he kept on going back to prison all that jazz like he just was this irresponsible and now he's lost everything and when then people reject him because now they don't want to be with him for uh, whatever reason it is that they don't want to be with him he now he just get like death is to him how dare you don't say no to me they get angry because they have been abandoned by the world due to their irresponsibility the their, their greed and their rapacity is what gets them to a point where now they can kill they just start from the very beginning with murder. They just start in Jefela. But they don't care shared blood. And like I said, most of my enemies are not like that, but my cousin certainly is. So Lomund uh, Lona is thoroughly trying to get me to do anything at all. They want me to settle. Uh, in my dream, I was dating some unbelieving Gen Z. Like anything at all, so I don't look so bad. Because Garabo is obviously strong, and she doesn't die when we do dead spells. So since she doesn't die when we do dead spells, okay, fine. So I guess she live, but she can't live in this condition because then I'm going to look really nasty. So fine, finally, okay, so for the first time, my cousin has agreed as if though she's in a position to make decrees for my life. As if though she can actually say yes or no, veto or lack thereof, any decisions made where I am concerned. Yeah, her dad wants me to get married. I already spoke about that, where it is that the dad is thoroughly working on random dark stuff to marry me off so I don't look so nasty. So I don't look so obviously afflicted by the out of hand, just essentially just entirely out of hand. Mm. 
out of line and out of hand and so now bafunugungi chatisa and the dad wanted to marry me off to uh like some millionaire some wealthy guy so i can be nice and cushy comfortable but my cousin knows that i need spice galam semali krensha bambu babu put my lisa bayangi bora she knows that that's always been a thing with me because she knows me better than her dad knows me so she tweaked her dad's witchcraft that's like it there's no tagati tweaked the dad's witchcraft where it is that the dad imagined what i need is a wealthy man that's going to take care of me for the rest of my life where i don't have a job but my cousin was like no what she needs is a handsome man a guy with more because she knows how to panel beat some brothers this chick knows how to love a guy on yana luto i watched that actually a guy also having no driver i'm a without driver the way in jefela love was always a big thing for garab so She's the kind of chick ukjola and jefela no muntu in so far as like she feels in gati this thing can work if in the potential angahamba nayo she has she watched me date potentials all my life like i told you we were best friends so i guess she, we sort of kind of exchanged notes on boyfriends lovers that whole thing and she is looking at the dad's witchcraft on some eyes with my dad oh naive my cousin cannot and jefela like, get humped on every night by some dude one more or some more thing marona the chalete at all she needs a handsome guy she needs a man that she is going to basically flirt with have fun with enjoy herself and in her sexuality with she needs a handsome guy she needs a guy oto mo khazang in so far as in jefela ngwana watu achazile <laughs> you know <laughs> you know when you use what you know about a person <laughs> against her in so far as in jefela she can laugh at his jokes and the two of them can can always be dancing and singing the two of them can always spend time together just making out if if she can just find some cute dude that is maybe even smart like her that is also what do you call this like a, a bit of a joker like a guy that she's going to be able to look into the eyes of longingly and lovingly amorate yeah and like belly too ibe a little bit of a skepsel couple mara even if it's a skepsel couple they really love each other <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure to lomo lo yam segisa. So basically everything I want in a man just not in a saved man that is age appropriate. <laughs> you know when I say drawing board these people they they go back to it yes but they keep going back to the drawing board. My cousin knowing what makes me tick. Remembering how Bodapali I used to date I just never in the name of love I was always like India Ari back in the day i am ready for love why are you hiding from me men are told and don't they ask like it guys yes it's given a matrix is way too like one come to us all everybody was so there nobody's buying the booze because nobody has the money <laughs> that's how i used to date <laughs> hey my <Mara>, passion <laughs> to some pretty broke guys <laughs> I was right or die to some broke dudes that don't nobody else want and they were always very romantic cuz they had nothing else to show me they had no money and so they had to be romantic so maintaining all my plum he was very sweet to me and like no reverse psychology no passing shade yo the guy was five years was like that and after he made money he became a jerk <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my cousin knows that that's how I am. <laughs> so now she wants to put me in like 2006 again. <laughs> Why I'm dating a broke guy as a broke girl and the trouble is your combo matrix. <laughs> so it is your combo. None of us have a car. And uh, however the girl is the one that's always hustling her mother's car so we we go to the club sometimes come ka kolo ya me like seriously <laughs> yeah i'm 39 <laughs> and in my dream i was dating a gen z <laughs> because that is exactly 
exactly exactly exactly the only kind of man <laughs> that would likely have those statistics like a kid a kid that is just starting life and he, he likes himself he's got one important thing you know he's all intrigued with a, an older woman and he's prepared to just grind with her strive and you know the two of them and just like basically pride themselves on the fact that at least we have each other <laughs> That's like your witches are hilarious. <laughs> I'm such only rough rough girl. I'm not doing that anymore. Woman needs security out here in these streets. Like I'm not about to go and throw myself into poverty for the rest of my days, especially not with a kid. A child whose mom is gonna hate me because I'm too old for him like I didn't have any issues with my ex-boyfriend cuz now he was older than me by four years and his mom liked me cuz I was good for him cuz I liked him I'm gonna <laughs> yeah now you want to put me in the, in the in the life of a poverty stricken Gen Z for real <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah but no not just any poverty stricken Gen Z but a poverty stricken Gen Z that has potential and <laughs> to make a lot of money one day that's what I saw in my dream and I was out here busy dancing with this guy and the two of us were so in love and I was like proper when I woke up I just rolled my eyes on some I'm never ever going to be one of those older women that were once very glorious and then next thing you see them walking around with some 25 year old guy like it'll never be me I don't know how many times I have said that that just because I still have my glory somewhat of my beauty intact does not mean I need to go me like your chonja like some 22 year old a boyfriend like y'all need to understand that I'm not doing it I'm not going to be one of those typical older women that are trying to reinvent themselves by being Stella getting her groove back because that's the kind of stuff that will win you lots of disrepute you as the woman and the guy's the one that's gonna look good but you're going to look really dumb it just does not work and on top of that parents hate older women for their sons they cannot stand them I've already done a whole series on that an entire series and my cousin looked at looks basic looked at the fact that i accommodated this loser from america this like random guy from america that wreaked havoc in my life and is still to this day wreaking havoc in my life oh boy if i could settle for an ex-convict with two ex-wives because i was sorrowful if she just puts me in a lot more sorrow she can bring in a, a, a better man i will admit that the gen z guy is much better than this guy in america because this guy in america was abusive he was mm, dangerous he was um a murderer you know like a rapist just some he became to me a murderer and a rapist he became dark like in a very disturbing way and like it's still to this day trying to kill me so my cousin was like fine i'll bring someone that's not so dangerous because frankly since you're gonna live we need you to be with somebody else mara because you cannot marry right you can't marry well like yes the woman that's always just had it in for you my cousin came and blocked not only career and education but also marriage anantwe kaznyaka did not come up against the way with the spirit of competition spirit of competition yeah she was like you're not gonna marry a guy that's bigger and better than mine Yo, Jake, where's the gang? Your man was dumb to marry you because Grandpa Pomoji said no more. So, halaboni, horo unobo dile abaho nyala anyway. So I don't even know what makes him better because he did not have enough discernment to avoid you. First and foremost, and she's like, she was like, you're not gonna marry a man that's better than mine. You're not gonna have a career, a job, a life better than mine. You're not gonna sport a ring on your wedding finger better than mine. There's nothing you're gonna do that is better than mine. As that level of competition, just sour, sour competition. Okay, girl, you know what? Do you? Uh, I guess if I'm not gonna marry a man that's better than yours, I guess I'm not gonna marry at all. If I'm not going to be happy or have any joy in the future, I guess that means I'm not going to get anything at all. What rather the Lord will do is just take us home. Like that level of evil in the wicked. I'm trying to get you guys to a point of recognizing. Hori, you can't just walk on the the, the premise, Yoguti. Your victims have yet to get any kind of semblance of uh uh, breakthrough or deliverance from you and so that's evidence that there's no God or that's evidence that they're ne never gonna come up again at the end of the day people like my cousin are the kinds that get suddenly caught off guard by death they suddenly just die like they die and then they find out or the God they undermined the God that their victims were holding on to was real like they people like my cousin just suddenly get blindsided by death and this afternoon when i was busy uh just ruminating on the, in, the insanity of my cousin the lord told me she's like tuli tilis tuli tilis 
Do you know who Tuli Tillis is, guys? Tuli Tillis was a musician in this country. I believe he was one of the guys by Binileng Lebo Cabello and TKZ, basically. Uh, that fiasco, fiesta, fiesta song, whatnot. Remember? Yeah, Tuli Tillis was a musician back in the day when we were on the come up. He was quite popular and he passed away uh, in a car accident called Rose Bank, coming back from wherever. All right, and it was shocking to the nation because he was at the height of his success at the time He was still quite big and still quite basically with a big future in the music industry and then he got in a car accident and died Yeah, his death was was shocking to the nation I guess similarly to the death of Paul Walker all the Walker fast and furious Everybody was still expecting him to be around for another 50 years and then he just died and I think he was in his either 20s at the time or very early 30s but i think it was 20s like he was very young car accident utilities passed away in a car accident and this um morning when i was busy thinking about my cousin and her insanity and what she's trying to do to me the lord told me tuli tilis tuli tilis like tuli tilis right uh tuli tilis died in a car accident when he was at the height of doing whatever it is that he was doing for a career for a life everybody was still looking forward to a long time for him and then next thing shocked the nation it shocked everybody the guy died in a car accident why the lord used tuli tilis i don't know he could have used aka he could have used any other person maybe it's because tuli tilis uh one minute maybe it's because tuli tilis died in a car accident in particular um i can't think of any other celebrity that died in a car accident that i knew sort of kind of well i don't know whatever that also shocked me when he passed away and yeah when i was busy thinking about my cousin moaning and pining and groaning in my spirit about her insensitivity towards me and the fact that like just leave me alone because I God was like Tuli Tilis literally those exact two words came to me and I was like are you telling me that this chick is gonna first of all I was told that she's gonna die suddenly but I wasn't told how and then this morning I heard Tuli Tilis and so I think God is telling me that she's gonna die like Tuli Tilis like in a car accident yeah okay the, what I'm trying to explain to you guys is that um when when you take your victor like people for granted when you look like as a witch when you you base your continuation as a witch in your craft on the fact that your victims have not gained what do you call this a reprieve from you and then you think Uguti, that is the the thing that runs the show god will have in the run-up to you suddenly passing away warned you multiple times that he is god that he's not going to give you a sign that he's not even going to rescue your victims from you in order to repent you but he is going to expect you to repent because you see that what you've done is wrong what you've done is messed up what you've done has caused a lot of pain in the environment that you're in and so that ought make you repent because there are ramifications the end result of what you have done is terrible you have made your whole entire family walk around on eggshells around you you have caused your sister to be scared of you when she used to admire you you have made the world around you nightmarish and that is enough that's all you're gonna run on you're basically being told that witchcraft does not pay off in the end you lose everything and everyone you love and if that's not enough to make you repent then i guess goodbye because i am not going to award you repentance by you making an observation that i'm real because you literally were testing to see if i am real by bewitching my servants and then when they survive you then would have the luxury of repenting only later but not first before afflicting them with demonic spirits you first afflict them with a life just a few abused garitari so i don't want you to be given an opportunity to repent because Karabo survived you anyway i don't want you i want you to be humiliated i want you to see that witchcraft does not pay i want you to see what you've done to your family i want you to see what you've done to your relationships i want you to see how the, the basically end result of what you've started to realize that satan is real and alive but so is god first of all garabo has not died she has survived and she has also been shown what you did that are that is evidence of me you have the invisible qualities of god all over creation and if you don't run with them i am not going to award you garabo's a breakthrough i'm not going to give you garabo's deliverance as a sign I am only going to give you Garabo's survival, very minimally so, of your witchcraft as a sign. And I will also give you your own life 
that is as uncomfortable as it presently is as a sign in uh, in the sense that it's not what it used to be you are no longer as happy as you used to be you in and of yourself also hate the fact that you keep on bewitching everyone around you you cannot stand what you have done and so because you can't stand it you know that who it is that you are serving is definitely not god he is not the one true god because he has not given you joy and he has not given you peace he has not given you rest he has just given you tumult in your spirit and he has also made out of you a life style which he has made out of you somebody that can't stop bewitching everybody and he has also made you obsessed with one particular victim of yours Carabo. and that victim of yours that you're obsessed with just so happens to be my christian my servant so you're not going to be given anything except your conscience and life consequences you're not going to be given more than just ramifications you're also going to be given the recognition of what you have done by this cousin she will keep on raising it she will keep on warning you and so raising what you have done she will say it over and over and over again stop what you're doing stop what you're doing i know what you did you're gonna get busted you're basically going to be proven to that there is a god that shows Karabo what you're doing and if you don't repent just based on that i'm not gonna give you more i'm not gonna give you more you're one day going to be driving back from work or back from what wherever and you're going to find yourself in a vehicle accident that is going to usher you into eternity and only at that stage will you then acknowledge that i am god i will give you nothing but the warning that you got from karabo all you have is basically her word and your observation of the fact that she might just be right you're also fear of the fact that if she's right she is then going to reign righteously in a way that is going to be respected and appreciated by the country that she lives in because you became a menace to it and if that is not enough to make you repent from your ways as a criminal in your land from your ways as a menace against your countrymen if you don't repent you will be extracted from south africa because you're not just a menace to Garabo's life you are a menace <clears throat> uh, to South Africa you are not just a menace to your cousin only but your entire nation is subjugated to the tyranny of you everyone that meets you is at a risk of being shot down by you your whole family is scared of you because of what you do you inducted your sister into this darkness and you made sure that she does not support a cousin that she knew was absolutely right you are about to be buried like ever so suddenly because you dared imagine me having abandoned my servant even though i made it clear that i didn't i caused your her that the first thing that you were supposed to run with is that baba Garabo survived the first ever human sacrifice ritual that you tried to do on her and that survival all those years ago almost 10 years ago it should have repented you immediately if you had repented immediately you would not have done any other human sacrifice ritual because she was the first attempt and it failed if upon it failing you should have just stopped because you were spared from having blood on your hands instead you went on right ahead and grabbed for yourself blood real blood you sacrificed other people you got to where you got through other people's blood because you could not get to Karab. and so after even after that even after those atrocities that you have committed i still gave you a chance i still made you See that Karabo is gonna be okay she's thriving I still called you I called you I called you I said repent I will forgive you your sins will be behind you past present and future because I am the Lord your God I can rescue you from this darkness the clutch of weighty evil that you are walking in but you made a decision to continue in it anyway so here it is that just like Tuli Tilis you've entered into eternity without acknowledging my name here it is that like Tuli Tilis you have come into a car accident that ushered you into a place you never imagined you would spend eternity in you have been told to depart from me because you were given more than enough to run with you were given everything you needed in order to choose me everything you were even so blessed that you got given a cousin that knew exactly everything that you did last summer so i'm not going to give you more than what it is that i have given you you have more than enough you've got the invisible qualities of god that are all over creation you have got your conscience and you've also got so much prophecy that you were given in the run-up to your death that upon arriving in eternity and seeing that i am real now that you have met your maker it is over for you it is over for you because you rejected me when i was calling you on a rooftop every day singing ululating praises garabo garabo was talking on her ministry in a ministry and you were convicted and instead of repenting instead of repenting you made a decision to keep on going back to the drawing board over and over and over and over and over again you made a decision to continue to bewitch her over and over and over again instead of repent 
you literally repeated the same spells for a decade against my daughter none of them worked but you hoped that one day something might work because you imagined that given that you afflicted her with attrition in other words pressure you put her in so much pain that you imagine that maybe one day she will eventually respond to what i want her to do because she's in too much pain now it's been going on for about a decade so because it has been going on for you imagined that this was the perfect opportunity to turn my daughter against me you imagined it was the perfect opportunity to turn my daughter against me due to what you imagine would have been her exhaustion at continuing to wait on me for answered prayer and in so doing such a thing as that rather condemned yourself you rather got yourself into the flames of hell because you waited as like with bated breath even for my daughter to eventually reject me for my daughter to ultimately reject me and well i mean since nobody will be plucked okay now finally this is finished since nobody will be, will, will be plucked from out of my hands your attempt to continuously pluck my daughter out of my hands by attrition is the thing that's going to send you to eternity it is the thing that is going to send you to eternity without me and now you will get to prove that the god that you've suspected all along is real is real except you are going to prove that from a vantage point where he has rejected you told you to depart from him told you that he does not know you told you that you are an abuser and an afflictor of his body that you keep on afflicting his children his church that you joined a cult that dedicated seances to afflicting christians in whatever circles they were in christians in the office you hated them christians uh in in uh, at play you hated them christians in your family you hated them christians everywhere where you met them you just could not stand them and so you cast spells indiscriminately afflicting the body of christ and one of the biggest afflicted souls that you messed with was your own best friend in the family you grew up with her you broke bread you loved each other at some point you were tight closer than brothers and then she was even to her own sister she was closer to me than my own brother my own sisters and she, you made a decision uh, despite having that level of closeness we were close even th than the closeness that she shares with her own sisters like i said closest in the whole family and somebody that tight with you somebody with whom you are that close you watch them suffer want you watch them struggle to get ahead you watched her struggle to breathe nearly die essentially try to even cause her to die and she was the only person that was speaking reason and sense into your head and in the run-up to even you dying she warned you that that would happen and then she even was given prophecy to a point of explaining how it would happen and you still carried on so this is just a warning basically to my cousin that she's going to pass away and from what the lord showed me i guess like two litilis in a car accident where it is that she will have been expecting a lot longer to live and then find herself one day in Jafela in a casket find herself in a car wreck with her standing over her body wondering what just happened and then getting collected by the angels of god only to be ushered into the presence of jesus christ who will tell her get out of my sight get out of my sight like I like God is real, which is Yazin. Like Mudimu Kinnit, whether or not you have evidence of it in the person in the in the sense that you cast spells against Christians and they failed. Whether or not that has been given you as a benefit of a doubt is irrelevant. You you keep on going back to the drawing board with believers precisely because sometimes it looks as if though God does not have their back. It looks as if though they, this God of theirs does not exist. You keep trying to cause Christians to compromise, to settle, to fall. You keep calling, trying to get believers to walk away from God or to abandon what they're waiting on the Lord for. Like here it is that a woman has prayed on God for a husband, to the Lord for a husband, and then she ends up settling for some divorced guy with three kids. Uh, when the scriptures make it clear that marriage and remarriage is a sin against God. And you cause a woman, like Garabo basically, to be, settle for a guy with two ex-wives and some kids even that he's not even taking care of. That's what nearly happened with me because of attrition, because of witchcraft, because of insanity. This guy from America, like I told you, was married twice, divorced twice and but he did not even highlight the ones god let me know by dreams and visions through prophecy basically that he only confessed two kids to you but he's got more he's got more and he's not taking care of them he is not responsible as a dad and yet he wants to come and put a baby in your stomach uh if anything recently he told me that around the same time that we broke up he had impregnated another woman that he was trying to deny the baby in that belly was his when i meet some other woman i don't know who but this guy 
wakula. So likely that woman also now yeah, is now HIV positive or I can say maybe she already had it angasi or maybe kano mufilenyona. I don't know. But some women woman was pregnant at the time we were dating by him. And this guy was prepared to ignore that baby to come to South Africa and live with me because of the fact that una una na high and low. Like umuntobole gangagwa. A person that rotten. I was prepared to accommodate. But you see, God was loving enough to even let me know in the belly of a woman as I spoke. As the two of us were speaking about our future, he had impregnated another woman. That's how careless this guy was sexually. He just dunked himself in Jephala like a donut and some chocolate in women. And some of the kids of which that he had, he wasn't taking care of. And then he meets a Christian on the internet and then tries to come into her life. The Christian of which would have accommodated him because of attrition if God did not block it dead in its tracks. If the Lord did not say, not on my watch, that I didn't even know had a new baby that I would have had like proper one first of all he would have made me sick but let's just put it out there that even if he like you know was undetectable and made me undetect blah 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 all that stuff those precautions that are taken I would have given birth to a child do you understand while another kid similar in age to my kid is out here without a dad while he would have been taking care of my kid because it was me he wanted like you take care of children that you make in so far as you love the woman is that what we're doing in so far as we you love the woman but the the women that you don't love their kids you don't take care of like that level of irresponsibility and i nearly settled for a guy like that because of women like my cousin because of the kinds of stunt works that are like my cousins the kinds of things that get done to people to make them accept anything but what is absolutely the right thing to embrace given the caliber of person that you are what it is that you're trying to do yeah that's what's good you out here are busy settling and a heart like very terribly settling because you're in pain and really like it does not get any better than what you imagine is this thing you're in a lot of pain and then you settle and my cousin was among the creators of that level of settling in my life where it is that you will cause a person's life to be so harsh uh, so so terrible that Uto Ngaten told the told that she never would have considered like never wait again this chick was nowhere near doing what it is that she eventually did but then you put her in such dire straits that she eventually did it so understand but wait do we this witchcraft of yours that you have lent lent on that has borne all of these ramifications all of these consequences later on in life understand that those consequences those ramifications that essentially bad outcome of your sorcery that is your olive branch a lot of times that is your olive branch a lot of times it is the observation of the fact that it does not pay off that you ought run with you should run with that to repent because you see that it's not worth it and you know what? there are so many people who actually have i don't know how many testimonies of former witches and people in the new age and the occult that i have listened to on the internet that stopped doing what they were doing just because they made an observation that this is not life it can't be they, they, they just made an observation that this is not the way that life is supposed to be and so they stopped that that is, so if it works on some people to make them stop with the new age and the occult it should then also make you stop it should make everybody stop sometimes god does not give unsaid prayer to christians at least not within your lifetime not within your lifetime he endures the believer through a lot of nonsense and then you die first before you get to see the believers uh, uh what is this before you get to see the christians breakthrough precisely because the lord would not award you with their breakthrough so that you can prove that god is real due to the fact that he made your spells fail the lord works in certain ways when it comes to the reprobate mind and you all need to start fearing him you must be scared of god because he shows people himself all throughout their lives and they just choose not to acknowledge that he's there let's move to the final part while i do my last two parts and i think what i'm gonna do with the situation on my head right now is something that we'll figure out later